Hey guys, what's up? It's Lady M with Pompadour Gaming, and this is our first ever episode of MMO March, which is massive multiplayer online gaming, and we are going to be playing Neverwinter. And this is the first time I've ever played this game, so I don't know anything about the setup for it or anything, so this will be a learning experience for everyone. Alright, so it looks like it's going to be having you set up all of the race class and everything, so this will be pretty interesting. So, it looks like the only one that you're, well, there are a few that you're not able to get. So there are five that you're not able to get. I am not going to try and pronounce that. Nope, not gonna, nope. Okay, so we've got Drow, Tiefling, Half Elf, Half Ling, Dwarf, Sun Elf, Wood Elf, Half Orc, and Human. So, in case any of you weren't paying attention, it, this is based on Dungeons and Dragons, um, which Mr. M and I play. And we're hoping to get together a group so that we can start posting videos of us playing D&D on this channel. It's just a matter of finding people to play it with. It's hard and working with people's schedules. It's pretty difficult. So I guess we're going to make this one like my character that I have in my game. That we do right now. Um, and I know that this game is set in the area of the latest version of Dungeons and Dragons. It's where I believe where we have our like I forget what it's called. It's like the starters pack to like get you into the game. Which we did because we've never played Dungeons and Dragons before and we absolutely love it. So I'm gonna be half elf. Well let's just see what all of these are like. It's gonna take a while I think. A uh, human, of all the civilized races, humans are the most adaptable and diverse. Human settlements can be found almost anywhere and human morals, customs, and interests vary greatly. Racial abilities, uh, versatile defense, you gain a bonus 250 points to all of your ratings, offense, and defensive stats. And you ability scores, you get a plus three to any ability score. Half orc, half orcs combine the best qualities of humans and orcs, though some would argue that the good qualities of orcs are few and hard to find. From their orc blood, half orcs inherit great physical strength and toughness. They are fierce warriors, lead a foot as they charge in the battle. Uh, racial abilities, furious assault, the critical severity is 5% higher than that of other races causing you to deal more damage when you deliver a critical strike. Ability scores uh, grants you plus two dexterity and either plus two constitution or plus two strength. Uh, swift charge, you gain a 10% bonus to movement speed for three seconds when you enter combat. This effect can only occur once every 20 seconds. Wood Elf, wild and free Wood Elves guard their forest lands using stealth and deadly arrows from the trees. They build their home in close harmony with forest, so perfectly joined that travelers often fail to notice that they have entered a wood elf community until it is too late. Racial abilities, elven accuracy, you gain a bonus 1500 critical strike. Uh, ability scores grants you plus two dexterity and either plus two intelligence or plus two wisdom and wild step you have a 10 percent resistance to effects that slow your movement sun elf the sun elves have lived apart from the events of the world for thousands of years they mimic the aloof nature of their society and their personal actions as well they are slow to smile quick to disparage and always ready to demonstrate their superior knowledge and skill. They don't sound very good. I don't think I would like them very much. Um, 
inner calm, your inner peace and serenity allow you to focus more clearly on the task at hand. Your action point gain is 2% higher than that of other races. Ability score grants you plus 2 intelligence and either plus 2 dexterity or charisma. Um, and Son of Grace, your exemplary grace increases your resistance to control effects by 10%. So dwarf, card from the bedrock of the universe, dwarves endured an age of servitude to giants before winning their freedom. Their mighty mountain fortress cities testify to the power of their ancient empires. Even those who live in the human cities are counted among the staunch chest, oh, staunchest goodness defenders against the darkness that threatens to engulf the world racial abilities stand your ground you have 20 percent increased resistance effects that knock and push you ability score grants you plus two constitution and either plus two strength or plus two wisdom and cast iron you gain a bonus 2000 defense that's pretty good halfling halflings are a small race known for their resourcefulness quick wits and steady nerves they are a nomadic folk who roam waterways and marshlands no people travel farther or see more of what happens in the world than halflings racial abilities include nimble reaction you gain a plus 1500 de deflect um ability scores uh grants you plus two dexterity and either plus two charisma or plus two constitution constitution bold your fearless nature increases your resistance to control effects by 10%. Half-Elf. This is what my character is in my actual D&D campaign that we are playing right now. Which is the starter pack. So, Half-Elves uh, descended from Elves and Humans. Half-Elves are a vital race in which the best features of Elves and Humans often appear. Abilities. Dilentin. Grids plus one ability score. This bonus is automatically determined by your class. Ability scores grants you plus two constitution and either plus two charisma or plus two wisdom. Uh, knack for success, for success. Your critical severity and gold bonus are each 1% higher than that of other races. And you gain 1,500 deflect. <laughs> Tieflings. Plagued by a dark and sinister heritage, tieflings walk through the shadows of their races past, savoring the darkness or trying to escape it. Tieflings are scattered through Faerun, littered geographically, in a reminder of distant times when devils and demons exerted an active influence over the lands. Uh, racial abilities, blood hunt, you deal an additional 5% damage to targets below half health. Ability scores grants you plus two charisma and either plus two constitution or plus two intelligence. Infernal Wrath. When you receive damage, you have a 10% chance to apply Infernal Wrath to your attacker for five seconds. This effect reduces the damage to the target's attacks by 2.5%. And the last one is Dro. Dro are a descendant race of dark elves whose beauty and sophistication fail to mask hearts all too often stained in evil. The vast majority of dark elves base their behavior and attitudes on the worship of the chaotic evil goddess Lalith, also known as the Spider Queen. Drow society is organized into houses, the heads of the most Powerful houses occupy leadership positions in the various cities of the Underdark, the subterranean realm beneath Faerun that the Dark Elves call home. Racial Abilities Dark Fire When attacking a foe, you have a 5% chance to apply Dark Fire for, five, for 4 seconds. This effect reduces the target's defense by 2,000. Ability scores grants you plus 2 dexterity and either plus 2 charisma or plus 2 wisdom. In trance, you have... Increased hit point re regeneration out of combat. So, I was going to pick Half Elf because that's what I am in the game that we are playing. But, you know what? I'm going to, we're going to mix it up. I think I'm going to be a drow. Or drow. However you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure. So, then the classes. You have rogue, cleric, wizard, ranger, 
Warlock, Paladin, Barbarian, Fighter, and that looks like it's it. So we'll go through all of these. Um, Rogue. The Rogue is a master of stealth who strike from the shadows with deadly precision. Rogues are athletic and nimble fighters who outmaneuver their foes before cutting them down to size. Rogues specialize in dealing damage. Uh, sample powers roll, flashing blade, shocking execution, and stealth. Cleric. The cleric draws upon the divinity of their god or goddess to heal wounds and smite foes. The cleric ensures their companions make it through even the most harrowing encounters alive. Upon reaching level 30, clerics may specialize in either healing or dealing damage. Uh, sample powers, dodge, healing word, hallowed ground, and channel divinity. Wizard. The wizard is a spellcaster whose power is rooted in the study of the arcane. To a wizard, knowledge provides the means to summon forth weapons of ice and rolling thunderstorms, or to simply disintegrate enemies with pure arcane power. Wizards specialize in dealing damage. Sample powers, teleport, disintegrate, ice knife, and spell mastery. Ranger. This is what my character is in the game. Um, I do really like this, this class. Um, but we're going to go through the rest of them and then I'll pick from there. Uh, the ranger is a worldwide wanderer, first in archery and melee combat. Rangers unleash a hail of arrows on foes from afar before closing the gap and finishing them off with close range attacks. Rangers specialize in dealing damage. Uh, sample power swift, rain of arrows, slashers, mark, and melee stance. Warlock. The Warlock is a spellcaster who draws power from a pact forged with an eldritch being. Warlocks weave curses and destructive magics and can even drain the life force of their foes. Upon reaching level 30, Warlocks may specialize in either dealing damage or healing. Uh, sample powers include Shadow Slip, Vampiric Embrace, Flames of Phlegox, I am probably butchering that, and lesser curse. Paladin. The Paladin is a righteous defender of the innocent, a holy knight devoted to the pursuit of justice. The Paladin draws upon their faith, wielding divine magics to heal allies and crush the forces of darkness. Upon reaching level 30, Paladins may specialize in either tanking or healing. Uh, sample powers include Block, Vow of Enmity, Shield of Faith, and Channel Divinity. That doesn't really sound like it fits our character class. Well, our race class. So, probably not the Paladin. Um, barbarian. The Barbarian is an unstoppable warrior skilled with heavy weapons. Some Barbarians hail from savage lands, but all embrace their inner beasts to become raging hurricanes on the battlefield. Upon reaching level 30, Barbarians may specialize in either dealing damage or tanking. Sample powers Sprint. Punishing Charge, Avalanche of Steel, and Battle Rage. And lastly, Fighter. The Fighter is a warrior who places themselves in harm's way to protect their allies. Sword in hand and shield held steady, the Fighter shrugs off devastating attacks and retaliates with a vengeance. Upon reaching level 30, Fighters may specialize in either tanking or dealing damage. And their sample powers are Block, Knight's Challenge, Second Wind, and Dig In. So, I, I like archery because sometimes I don't particularly care to get very close to enemies, especially when playing D&D. It is never a good thing to be super close to your enemy. From experience, I'm not going to say very much about what we've done, but... My character has almost died several times in the DMD campaign campaign that we are doing right now, and it is kind of embarrassing a little bit. And she's a ranger. But I and I try to run away from like all of them at the same time as I'm shooting arrows at them, so it's I don't know how any of my other friends who play. Which really right now is just the we play with one other person. I don't know how he hasn't almost died. So, 
let's see, ability scores. As a ranger, strength and dexterity are useful ability scores. So my racial abilities, I get to choose one of these. Um, let's see, do I want, obviously I'm getting a plus two to dexterity no matter what. Um, We'll do it to Wisdom, just because Wisdom is one of my crappier ones, so we'll just do it to the Wisdom. And then we get to pick what my character is going to look like. So Let's give her a badass haircut. I highly doubt they have my haircut, because my haircut is asymmetric, but it's not like that. It's not shaved on one side. I'm not that brave to do that. Dig in this white hair, though. Um, I am not going to go through all of these, mainly because it would take literally forever, because I am a perfectionist. I will do the hair, though. I'm a perfectionist whenever it comes to... Um picking stuff for my character and it's not good it takes me a really long time so the reason we're playing this game um, originally it was going to be Elder Scrolls Online but uh, in thinking with how I want this content to be I decided that it wouldn't be good to play Elder Scrolls Online because I have played it. I have not finished it all, but I have finished some of, many of the campaigns, and I want this to be something that I'm playing to branch out and try new games and not stick in my comfort zone. So, originally I was going to play Elder Scrolls online. I have a champion level, level character on that game. Um, so it's not new to me. It's, it doesn't have the same thrill as whenever you first start playing a game. And I know what I'm doing. There wouldn't be any fumbling around or anything that I think would make it entertaining. And that would increase my skills as a gamer. Because I have definitely not been playing video games as long as Mr. M. I've been playing role-playing games for about four years since we started being together. Before that, it was mostly just fighter games. Like uh, Mortal Kombat. And really, pretty much that was it. And some, some of the racing games. And I did play Pokemon whenever I had a Game Boy. And when I was really little in elementary school but this is to branch out and try to do new games so that's why we selected this one and for anyone who wants to know this game is actually free to get on your console i'm playing it on ps4 which is a really nice factor too that's not why i picked it it sounded really interesting and i really like dnd and since this was made by dnd i would like of course this is what i'm gonna do so, that's just a little background as to why we're playing this and not a more well-known game. So, we're going to do Deity Affiliation. I'm going to butcher all of these names. I'm not even going to try and say their names. Sun Person is the god of the sun and time. His church teaches that he has died and been reborn time and again like the turning of a great clock. He is revered by farmers, merchants, and nomads who followed the seasons and the turning of the celestial clock, as well as paladins who battle undead. I think that's Shantae. Shantae, I think. Flower person. Shantae is the mother of Toril, and she oversees the interaction of sentient mortals with the natural world. She draws worshippers from all who depend on the land for their livelihood, including farmers and villagers who live close to the land and druids who tend to 
tend the wild reaches, Shantae is a kindly goddess who nurtures and feeds the world. Star Person is a skilled warrior and the father of the elven race who were born of the blood he shed in his epic battles with Grumash. Star Person is worshipped by the elven races and half-elves as well as those who work magic. He's a benevolent protector of his followers and is focused on long-range goals. Skeleton Arm Presides over the passage from life to death, judging the faithful, faithless and the false, and apportioning souls to their proper fate in the afterlife. His followers are drawn from those who find comfort in the natural transition from life to death and those who battle undead and the practitioners of necromancy wherever they might be found. Absolute fairness, firm hand, and steady grace bring comfort to those who lose a loved one. Sylvanus? The forest father, a tree father, or tree father, is the lord of nature in all its wild splendor. He is worshipped by druids, rangers, hermits, and others who dwell in the wilderness. Sylvanus is wild and unpredictable, given to tender acts of mercy and wild bouts of savagery. I'm liking him so far. Tree father. Saloon. The goddess of the moon governs the ebb and flow of tides and comforts the world with her silvery glow in the black of night. She constantly battles the darkness of her sister, Shar. The ranks of saloons faithful include mariners, travelers, and those who see comfort in the night. Saloon is kind, caring, and ageless, ever waxing and waning in power. Agma is the lord of knowledge and thought both the spoken and the written word. The binder is served by all who seek knowledge, including bards, lore keepers, sages, scribes, and wizards. Ogma thrives on new ideas regardless of their consequences and the communication of knowledge in all its forms. Moradin, the Allfather forged the dwarf race from gems and precious metals and imbued the dwarves with souls with the strike of his mighty hammer. Moradin is revered by dwarves, blacksmiths, and those who work with gems and metals. The soul forger is stern, stubborn, and uncompromising, but tireless and brave in the defense of his creations. Does he have three names? Moradin, all father for the all father, the soul forger. Okay, that's three. Soon, soon is the mistress of beauty and tender emotions. She is revered by artists, lovers, and galleons drawn from the ranks of humans, elves, and half elves. Despite her flirtatious loving nature the lady of love holds herself aloof pledging her heart only to her faithful tempest tempest is the god of battle and patron of martial prowess he is revered by all warriors from the lowest soldier to the mightiest warlord the fearless lord of battle views war as a force of nature that shapes and reshapes civilization torm the loyal fury of the god of law dutifully upholding the structures of civilization torm is served by paladins and other holy champions ever steadfast and true he is consumed by his sense of duty timora known as lady luck timora is the goddess of good fortune those who seek good luck or want to express thanks for having received it pay homage to timora i'm gonna pick him he sounds cool and he's wild and unpredictable given to tender acts of mercy and bouts of savagery sylvanus oh my goodness all right i'm not gonna go through all of this because this seems like a lot eh, 
I mean, maybe not that much. Okay, yeah, it's a lot. I don't know where to pick because I'm not super familiar with this map. Okay, this one sounds the most like where my character would be from, though. It's called the North Dark. Uh, Faerun's Underdark is a network of subterranean tunnels, caverns, seas, and rivers that span the entire world beneath the lands north and east water of Waterdeep and Neverwinter lies a vast and notorious domain called the North Dark. Although I do think that maybe I should be picking um, a, a foresty type place because I am a ranger. So maybe I'm thinking maybe my character has left. Okay, I like this one. Grey Vale. Beneath the mysterious star mounts at the southern edge of the ancient high forest, the Grey Vale straddles the river. Delamibir? Delim, Delim beer. In the north, the dangerous wilderness helps produce a hardy breed of adventurer. That's what we're gonna go with. Um, okay, so then it has you pick origins variant. Um, you can go heroic scion beneath the mysterious star mount. Okay. Um, your parents settled in Grey Vale after the life of adventure and you were raised on their stories. Um, savage youth, you hail from one of the Uthgart barbarian tribes prowling the lands north of Grey Vale. Or woodland hunter, you are a skilled hunter and expert tracker familiar with the ways of the wild. Um, I kind of like that last one. We're going to see what these ones are. Um, you have survived and escaped. Okay, so I read this one previously. Uh, Faerun's Underdark is, an, is a network of subterranean tunnels, caverns, seas, and rivers that span the entire world beneath the lands north and east of Waterdeep and Neverwinter lies a vast and notorious domain called the North Dark. Um, so for escaped slave, you have survived and escaped one of the infamous slave pits of the North Dark, seeking sanctuary in the surface world. Um, you are a North Dark Explorer. You're, you've traversed the hidden paths leading between the wicked cities and mysterious ruins of the North Dark. Or, under Dark Exile, you have violated the laws of your people in the North Dark and have been banished to the surface world. So, we're going to go with that one. Um, enter my character name. Oh no, where do I? Set character name. Enter value. Nobody judge me on how good I am at this because I'm pretty bad. So we're just. If you ever see Mr. M do this, he is the speediest of the speedy people. I am not. Okay, confirm. Alright, let's begin adventure! Like an undead dragon. You might want to brace yourselves for this. Got him. 
shots on this look pretty good. Can we Well, that didn't go so badly. Get his attention. Cleric with me. Okay, so she's a cleric. That's some I'm not sure what the key point is. A wizard, maybe? Kind of looks like an army of the undead. Whoa. What was he trying to do to her? I'm assuming he's a barbarian. That was a pretty cool opening scene after you get your character set up, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very intrigued. Um, there are several different types of consumables that you can purchase from stores, such as potions and kits. Don't forget to use... I didn't get to read that Oh, I hope there's not this border around it all the time, because that's gonna be annoying. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're in third person. The quest tracker displays current quest objectives. Okay, quest tracker displays. Okay, so it looks like it talks to you. Who am I supposed to talk to? This person? So you could still walk. You were in bad shape when we pulled you from the front line. I don't know how I feel about untested adventurers volunteering their aid in this fight, but my men need all the help they can get. That blasted Dracolich is tearing through our ranks. Protector's Enclave needs reinforcements. Fight your way to the Sleeping Dragon Bridge. If you see a particularly imposing tiefling, that's Makos. Do what you can to aid him. Before you go, make sure to arm yourself while the trials are ahead. Understood. Kind of neat. Um, okay, so press A one and left button to open your inventory. Select an item to equip it. Press the touchpad button to toggle between HUD elements. Okay. 
This mysterious package contains items to aid you in your quest. Select the box to open it. You cannot use slash equip this item. And it looks like it has this neat little. Has a rest zone to where out of combat players may heal. This little thing that tells you where you Be need to go. Be careful out there. Interesting. Having a reticule over objects and enemies to target. Interesting. Click in the L3 button and move it any direction to shift away from enemy attacks. You cannot shift when your stamina is low. Okay, neat. takes some definite getting used to. collect items. I'm also not super great, super great at aiming. Okay, so this is Makos, the guy I want to talk to. Ah, good. You look capable. We are preparing to push towards that bridge and rendezvous with the soldiers holding the line there. We need to move quickly before the drug collection returns. I'm ready. Maybe. I don't really know. We'll see. That dragon is pretty awesome looking, I'm not gonna lie. It's time to put an end to this beast! There are a lot of cut Like cut beats, but... Really? That's all it took? That's it! We must bind its soul before it rises again. Make haste! Oh. Why do I feel like it's it's definitely gonna come alive again? What did I do? Oh. So you really don't even have to be that that close to like hitting your target. I don't have to aim that good. That's that's at least a good thing. Because I'm pretty terrible at it.
cool beans. I'm doing all right. Holy shiznit. All right, that was an awful lot of enemies. And they all just disappeared. So that's cool. I don't know why they all disappeared. Helping me. Oh, these people. Oh, I guess I wasn't really paying attention, and I could have just gone up here. You did well to keep the undead at bay. We are holding the line here while we treat the wounded. I fear the bridge is in worse shape. You would do well to assist there. I like that. Seek out Sergeant Knox once you've crossed the bridge. I will. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't know if that's just because Go it's kind of like the tutorial. Or if this is how it's always going to be. I guess we'll find out as we continue playing. But I want to be able to wander around. I wonder if I can wander around if there's things to collect off bodies. Or if it's, They're in trouble. it's not going to be like that. To their aid. I guess we'll find out as we continue to play. Whoa. How, how you get experience build up. I guess I'm just curious about how a lot of these things work. Whoa. That, that was really awesome. I'm glad I have some other people. Not just me. It keeps saying points. I don't know if that's the damage that I'm doing. It keeps showing a target. Why are you on an undead horse? I don't like it. Whew. Okay, so I'm already up to level four. That was semi-terrifying, and I didn't like it at all. Um, I'm guessing this green bar up at the top is my health. Um, so I'm not doing too bad, it seems. I thought I would be doing a lot worse, but I guess they haven't really gotten that many hits on me, so that would make sense that I wouldn't have that little health. Oh, okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and... Jeez, looks really crazy. I like her outfit. Crap, am I gonna have to fight that? Ooh, he's got a sword sticking out of his side.
Almost done. Whew. You can now slot on a second encounter. Uh, power. Press. I don't know how I did that. Um, close. Poachers. Love. Power. Oh, okay. So. Oh, I have like a lot of different attacks that I didn't really know about. I don't know if you can hear it, but my cat is one of my cats is making a very large amount of noise. <laughs> she is in the She's in the bedroom with Mr. M. I believe I'm in your debt. You fight quite well. When you are ready, we should move on to protect his enclave. I'm ready. Yeah, Mr. M has the cats and our baby, Piper, in the bedroom so that it's quiet out here and they don't jump on the desk when we film but the cats hate hate being in the bedroom so they're making a lot of noise i'm surprised they're not play fighting with each other or just being crazy Guess we'll talk to you. I'm not really sure how to reset these down here. Um, I'm gonna have to do some. As you can see, the fight's not yet won. You've proven yourself quite capable. I must ask for your help in concerning matter. I've just received a report of fighting in the vaults beneath the Hall of Justice. The seer Sabella was down there doing research. Sooner Makos and I must remain here to defend the Enclave. Therefore, the task falls to you to ensure Sabella's safety. Borrow a steam from Private Wilfred here. Time is of the essence. Understood. Alright, well, I think that is where we're going to end the episode. This was our very first episode, and I'm pretty excited to continue playing and see how this storyline goes. Um, so far, I'm really liking this game. It's The controls are very different than any other game that I've ever played, so that'll take some getting used to. But all in all, I am thoroughly enjoying Neverwinter, and um, I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um, I don't really care about being in third person perspective. I know some people don't like it. They prefer first person. It doesn't really bother me. Um, Dragon Age, which is one of my favorite games, is a third person view, so I'm kind of used to it. Uh, but this is where we're going to leave you. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys continue to watch this adventure unfold. And please remember to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button and ring that bell so you can get notifications about when we post another video. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.